Respect your past and define your future. That's the theme for the fourth episode of Learning is the New Working, a podcast for learning leaders brought to you by the Learning Futures Group. I love the ironic disappointment implicit in our theme song by the Portland band Yacht, which, since some of you have asked, is a sample taken from their track called I Thought the Future Would Be Cooler. Check out the whole song on your preferred music streaming service, but the point, of course, is that we here at Learning Futures Group do think the future of learning has to get cooler, especially in a world of accelerating change. My name is Chris Peary, and I'm the former Chief Learning Officer at Microsoft and now CEO of the Learning Futures Group. I'm also the host of this podcast for learning leaders in businesses of all sizes and in all geographies who share our belief that workplace learning industry is ripe for disruption. We don't have all the answers, but we have some great questions and we're insatiably curious, which we think is an essential mindset for turbulent times. Today's guest is Ludo Farage. Ludo is the chief product officer and founder of the Pacific Northwest startup called New Camp. His engineering background and expertise in learning led him to Microsoft. Where he did find a cooler future, a senior director of learning responsible for the learning portal serving over 100,000 voracious Microsoft employees. He led a number of other innovative projects designed to scale and democratize learning for the Microsoft field. He was named as a future learning leader by CLO Magazine in 2015, and he's passionate about developing new learning products that empower individuals to keep pace with the incredible change. In 2016, Ludo founded NewCamp, a community coding bootcamp with a social mission to help underserved communities become web developers and join the digital workforce. Our sponsors for this episode are the smart folks at Intrepid Learning, who make a powerful collaborative learning platform that helps organizations solve high-stakes business issues through engaging and applied learning at scale. We've worked with their technology on several programs at Microsoft, and I can confirm that they're successfully disrupting old-school corporate training technologies, helping individuals learn and improve and organizations transform and grow. Please check them out at www. Dot intrepidlearning.com. I'm very excited today to introduce you to Ludo Farage of New Camp. Uh, Ludo, welcome to Learning is the New Working. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Uh, you're most welcome. Listen, I'm really grateful for your time, and uh, I thought today we'd talk about a couple of things where I think you have a lot to teach and share with uh, learning leaders and, and people in the Learning Futures Group community. Uh, I'd thought about sort of three topics, uh, being familiar with uh, a lot of your work. One is about just kind of innovation in the learning space and how to approach that and how to do it. I think you've got great experience of doing that. Um, secondly, I want to talk about this prevalent bootcamp model for reskilling. Uh, especially in the context of coding um, and what the rest of us can learn from from what you know about that space. And third, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about your transition from a fairly long-term corporate career to a sort of entrepreneurial entrepreneurial role. So does that sound good? Perfect. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Great. Um, so let's get started. As usual, we'll start with a quick fire round of questions to sketch a picture for our listeners of your work Pr pr um, your work practice. Uh, are you ready to go? Yes. Okay. So, Ludo, where am I talking to you? What part of the world do you live in, and how come you ended up here? Yeah. So I'm uh, in Bellevue, which is um, uh, a close city, uh, a city close to Seattle. Um, and I've been in the U.S. for I mean, ever since 2012, uh, and I followed my wife actually to. Um, who was going to do a postdoctoral position at the time. And so we landed in Boston and then uh, three years later arrived in the Seattle suburbs. Terrific. Great. Uh, it's a nice place to live. Um, can you tell us what you studied at college and what, what motivated you to study that? 
Yeah. Um, so it's uh, I studied in Bordeaux, which is south of, south of France. Um, many people will know the region for its wine, obviously. Uh -huh. uh, but I studied. Um, I have a master in computer science and also economy, which is kind of a weird blend that uh, yeah we do <laughs> we do back in France. So That's... I kind of I learned to code, and at the same time I learned accounting and things like that. Very cool. Very cool. And do you have a uh, sort of personal mission around your work? Do you, do, is there something that you're trying to get done? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Uh, I think overall, if I look back uh, 20 years almost of a professional career, uh, it's always been about uh, finding problems to solve. Uh, I love to go into solution mode and, and uh, brainstorm and, and come up with a good ideas, interesting ideas that help uh, everybody else. So I'll say that's kind of a, uh, my motus operandus right now. A uh, helpful problem solver. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Um, okay, let's get into business and let's talk about boot camps. Um, there's a plethora of hot startups in the boot camp space uh, coming into business and going out of business and getting acquired and getting funded and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, can you... Um, can you sketch out for us what a boot camp is and, and why they're so hot right now? Yeah, no, sure. Um, so originally the term boot camp really was associated with the army, right? And, and the expectation was yeah. it's going to be really hot for you to go through a boot camp. You're not going to sleep much uh, and you're going to really have an intense immersive experience to learn the skill. Uh, and so that term really was brought over into the coding world to kind of really illustrate the type of experience uh, anyone will have trying to learn to code in a very compressed amount of time. And so typically, a coding bootcamp will last between 10 to 22 weeks, and it will be intense, like a army bootcamp. Um, and so you typically, when you, when you do that full time, you will spend 12, 16 hours a day coding seven days a week. Uh, and the idea is you'll be so immersed, uh, so much, uh, you will be coding so much so uh, every day of your life that at the end you will actually have acquired all the skills that you need to uh, to get onto the job market. Um, now, the reason they're so hot is uh, because there's a huge need out there, obviously. Um, I, I was looking up some numbers and to give you an idea... Uh, in 2016, there were like 162,000 web developer jobs. Um, and that same year, only 32,000 computer science uh, graduate uh, of a master uh, computer science degree, for example. Now, the ratio is kind of um, one to five almost. But what's actually mind-blowing is now if you look at the next... Uh, job category, which is software development. The previous one was web development. Uh, and I'll actually, I'll ask you if you can guess it. How many do you think software development jobs are in the United States in 2016 or where in 2016? Oh my gosh, 250,000. I'm... So, yeah, quite close to the web development number, you would think, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 1,250,000 jobs for just software development and right. and so that kind of gives you an idea of you know uh why do we need coding boot camps why do we need more ways to actually train people uh it's because there's a huge gap between the number of people who get the skills and the number of companies uh, or how much society actually need those skills right now well there's sort of two angles about this that's really really interesting one is you know our, our former boss um um where Satya has sort of said and other people in the tech industry have said that in the future, um, all companies will be software companies. And I think the point is that the ability to wrangle and create and manage and derive insights from data uh, is going to be increasingly important and platforms yeah. are increasingly important way to to drive business and so on and so forth, this whole di digital disruption. And I'm sure a lot of CEOs around the world are looking around and saying, where am I going to get the skills uh, to take my business through digital transformation? Yeah. And I'm sure that's behind, behind some of these incredible numbers. There's also uh, a dimension of this, and I think we'll talk about it a little bit more later on, about the, the, one of the side effects of the 
digitization of business is a lot of people get made redundant. A lot of people's skills are no longer valuable in the workplace. There's a lot of anxiety around that. And that requires kind of retraining. And, uh, and I'm assuming that the boot camps kind of position themselves as, as engines for retraining as well. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it actually started with the whole movement started as a reskilling, uh, get a new lucrative job uh, move type of movement. Um, and it's still... I, still addressing that market and in new camp in particular is very much focused on that approach. Uh, other coding boot camps have also gone into the corporate space, uh, really helping existing employees um, who may not actually be at risk of losing their jobs, uh, but maybe want to kind of learn the new technology, right? So yeah, more of a lifelong learning type of thing that I know we'll talk about as well. Yeah, preparing um, for the future. I get it. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, it's funny. I, I had a student reach out, uh, actually a future student um, reach out recently uh, who just said exactly what you described. Uh, she's in accounting and, and her uh, first email to me was, hey, I, I, I'm seeing software, accounting software, gradually um taking up taking away work from me and i'm concerned about uh what that, what that may mean in like the next two years uh and so she was actually looking into something connected to our field which is around data data management data science uh, she's been crunching numbers for a long uh, long time and so she was hey she was like can, can I actually transition into that field of uh, not being the guy or the gal really uh having <laughs> having a chance to develop those those, those software uh, who are doing most of the, the accounting work? It's a great story. It's a pretty switched-on person, I think. What? What? T so, 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 t tell, tell us, Ludo. Like, why did you found New Camp, and yeah. and and what is unique about New Camp's approach in this kind of very crowded, volatile space? Yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'm, I'll be happy to. So, the whole purpose of New Camp, and as I said, many coding boot camps started with the premise of offering people better jobs. Um, and you have to imagine that those individuals who are seeking a better outcome uh, are probably in a precarious situation already. Uh, if they have a job, they don't like the job, they fear that they may lose it or it's not paying well enough. And the challenge that they're in at that moment of really evaluating their future is they could register to a coding boot camp that's going to take them away from their current job for like 18 to 22 weeks with the promise of a better outcome at the end, but at the cost of also paying a high tuition of 10 to $15,000. Yeah, these are not cheap. These exactly. Programs. And and the quality of those programs are pretty good, but but there's so many parameters to, to, to those, which is, for example, if I'm someone in those shoes, I don't even know that I'm going to like it yet. I, I don't even know that that really coding is what I, I enjoy doing because I don't really have the experience. And so I would take the risk of kind of figuring it out by myself, likely after having quit my job and, and lost the tuition. I, I very often, I actually can't afford to, to quit my job and do that, right? It's too much of a risk. I have bills to pay, et cetera. Yeah. And um, I don't want to take a another loan for the tuition. And then, <laughs> there may even not even be a coding boot camp where I live. And so to give you an example, New Camp started in Tacoma, which is just 40 miles away from Seattle. But that was a huge barrier for anyone there really thinking about applying to a coding boot camp because the commute in the morning, in the afternoon was just way too much for their life. Right. So typically these are in-person events. You're in a big That's room right. with a bunch of other students, a very immersive kind of approach. So, exactly. so what's what's unique about the new camp approach? So that's, you know, what I said about you looking at problems and trying to fix them. It's yes. really looking at all of those, all of those dimensions and, and say, hey, there must be a better way. And so the better way started with the premise of removing most of the risk that that person gets into. And the risk is you don't, I mean, the removing the risk means you don't have to quit your job. So the program has to be part-time. It has to be an evening and weekend program. Okay. We can't ask you to pay ten to 15000 because likely you still won't have the money to pay that amount. And so from the beginning, we, uh, the, the premise was it's going to be like 90% cheaper. So our program right now, 22 weeks, is $1,600 for wow. 22 weeks. 
Well, that's a big difference. And then we can't ask you to commute, right? Uh, and so another aspect of 